Joining us now, pediatric airway surgeon and assistant professor at Columbia University Irving Medical Center in New York City, Dr. Susanna Hills. Dr. Hills, thank you so much for being here. Let's start by talking about hospitals. They are getting pushed to the brink right now. We have soaring cases uh, of, uh, from this new variant and staffing shortages. Give us a sense as to what's happening in hospitals and what do they need? Yeah, right now we are just seeing so many cases that that is spilling over and causing a real crunch in our hospitals. We're topping now 700,000 new cases a day in this country. I mean, the number is staggering. It's twice the number where um, we were at this moment last year. And we're seeing that reflected in our hospitalizations. Uh, in the state of New York, 40 hospitals were asked over the weekend to stop elective surgeries because of the critical staffing and bed shortages in hospitals across uh, across my state here in New York. Um, and we're seeing the same thing in other states across the country now. Uh, Oregon, uh, over the weekend as well, um, reported they had only 42 hospital beds in their ICUs, and they uh, they put out guidelines on how to allocate precious resources should that need arise. So we're seeing it here in New York, certainly, and, and now we're seeing it across the country in other states as well. Right, and so much of it isn't that people are as sick as they were from previous strains, at least those who are vaccinated. But there's just so many people who are sick. It is straining resources. Let's get your take on what I just talked about, this new variant that alleged seems to combine Delta and Omicron. That's not great. But more than that, whether this variant turns into anything or not, it seems to be further proof that this the pandemic itself isn't going away anytime soon. There seems to be the possibility anyway of new strains continuing to emerge, particularly if there are huge swaths of the country and the world that are not vaccinated. So how are we going to handle this? Do you anticipate that we're going to need vaccines and boosters? Is that going to be part of a, a regular routine that we all get every six months or so? Unfortunately, I think you're right, Jonathan. Um, the shift right now in thinking really has to be from, you know, now how are we going to get past this surge and get beyond this virus to how are we going to live with this virus for the long term? And, and that's really where we are. Um, and the answer primarily is really vaccination. In our country, in much of the developing world, vaccination rates are, are, um, are going reasonably well. But when there are countries across the globe with vaccination rates under 10 percent, um, you can imagine that this virus is going to continue to mutate and we're going to continue to see various strains. Hopefully, as we go on, we can help other countries get the vaccinations that they need. More people in our own country will get boosters right now. We're still at just above 30 percent of people um, who are eligible getting boosted. Uh, so, you know, we need to, of course, um, continue to increase our own numbers with, with our boosters and, and with our vaccinations of young people. But it, it's a global issue and, and we're not going to see a, a, a slowing down of this virus or a manageable level of cases until we really get a vaccination level globally that protects uh, the rest of the world. Yeah, you've identified a, an important storyline there, the idea for these some of the wealthier countries to prioritize boosters, third and fourth shots for their people, or help out the developing world get their first or second. Uh, Dr. Susanna Hills, we really appreciate it. We hope you will come back again soon.